I'm not even gonna write a last name. Church family, so 
that's that's one of our small groups. We also have our school of ministry, which meets on Wednesday night. I, I'm teaching a Bible study class. That's a small group, or youth group, or women's group, men's group. They're all small groups, and when you get to be part of that, you start to hang out people that are, well, you know, about the same place that you are, just looking to serve God and love God and work together to build a kingdom of God. So once you do those things and you start falling in love with people, your vision starts to expand. You fall in love with God, and then you look around and you go, oh, I need to love these folks too, and you start loving them. Then as you start doing that, you start getting healthy. You start getting spiritually healthy as you're walking on that journey. All of a sudden, you start realizing that there are people all around us that are hurting, that have not found God. They haven't connected yet with God through worship. They haven't come in, so we invite them to church. And then, you know, the, the, the end result is that we become very missions-minded. We want to reach the world, and we can reach out into other places. I know the ladies are talking about a missions trip next year to Thailand. That's very exciting. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, ladies, talk to Esther when you're ready for that. Uh, so we need y'all need to start saving money and start selling crafts or whatever it is y'all need to do. But we need to start getting money together. But that'll be a, a fun missions trip. And so you know when you start serving on a ministry team to impact others for Christ, it can happen locally. There are two ways. One is internally in the church where you become part of the greeters or part of the people who help decorate or part of the people who help in different areas. And then on the other side is helping. When we do big outreaches, which we're planning on doing one next next year, a big community outreach like we did this year, where we have the free shoes for kids and the free haircuts and the free groceries and just all of that. We had over 800 people go through that uh, this year, and so we're looking to, to kind of bump that up a little bit next year. And so we're going to need a lot of volunteers for that. We need you to show up and, and to help and, and be part of that. And that's, that's where... That full circle comes in. You've connected with God. You fell in love with God and His Word. Then you've connected to God through these people that you get to do life with. We get to do life together. We've been through a lot of things. Veronica and I have been blessed to be here almost 23 years now at this church. And we've, we've seen some of these kids grow up in this church, born here. And we've seen them grow up and get married and, and go off to college. And we've seen, you know, many of you, we've... we've been with you through difficult things and hospital visits and births and deaths and I mean that's that's doing life together that's what it's about where we love each other because we're not supposed to do life alone we're, we weren't created to do that that's right. we were not created to be a hermit in a cave and some wilderness and trying to seek God for 40 years you know that, that was not why you were created you were created as part of a community and to minister, God has a gift and a calling on your life just as much as he has on mine. And as we get healthy and we work with each other, then we want to serve the rest of the world. So let's talk about, let's get to some uh, basic practical things of what we are seeing. I think that what we're seeing, and I, you know, this is a no-brainer, but we're filling up this little sanctuary pretty nicely on a regular basis. The AC has a little bit of a hard time keeping up because it's so hot. This is the hottest time of the year. Okay, so it's it's taking a little bit to to cool down sometimes on a Sunday morning, and so we've had the discussion about moving back to the main sanctuary. So the big idea of our talk this morning, not so much as a message, is to move back into the main sanctuary as soon as we possibly can. So there's several things that need to happen, and we're going to be working on that uh, pretty soon. We need to do some remodeling over there, uh, fresh coats of paint, uh, some, some walls are going to come down, and some walls are going to go up. Uh, the bathrooms need to be redone. Uh, they have to be ADA compliant so that somebody can go in there with a wheelchair, you know, handicap accessible and so forth. And so we're hoping to kind of move as fast as we possibly can. We're going to do most of the work. We're, gonna just, we're just going to say we're going to do all the work ourselves. And so we're going to try and save as much money as we possibly can. But there will be some money involved. Now, you've heard this. There's good news and bad news, right? The good news is we have all the money we need to do everything we want to do. The bad news is it's still in your pocket. This ain't my first rodeo. I'll just say that, okay? Remodeling will be done in stages as funds 
are available. And so let's look at the stages. Stage one, and I brought this drawing, not drawn to scale, but it's close. Our bathrooms that are back there are too small, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert them into a single large ADA compliant family restroom. Each one. So there's not a man or a woman. So only one person can go in there and lock the door behind them. Okay? Clean up the mess. Clean up. <laughs> wash your hands. And come back out. Okay? So that is going to be our immediate project. When I say immediate, we are starting demo tomorrow. So we're going to start demoing those uh, bathrooms, tearing them down, stripping them down, widening the doors, all that stuff. So tomorrow at 4.30, uh, we're going to start that part of it, and there's if you have if you can come out and help with the demo. If you can't help with the demo, but you'd like to get involved, uh, talk to Esther or Renee. They're going to be helping out. We need those rooms in the back. These three rooms yeah. in the back need to be totally. Everything needs to be out. They're going to be having some uh, remodeling, some new paint. Uh, there's uh, two doors in that nursery. We need to get rid of one of the doors. Uh, just different things that we need to get done in there quickly so that we can do this as fast as we possibly can. I want to say, if you don't know who Dan Gonzalez is, he's the guy who should have been fishing today, but the Lord sent him back over here. Good. Dan is our point man, okay? So he is going to be in charge of all the, the projects and stuff like that. Uh, don't bother Dan, okay? Dan knows what he's doing. He's fantastic. He's got, he's, he talks to me. We get the thing figured out. Uh, and so it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. But uh, that, that helps me because, yeah, I don't have another remodel left in this old bowl. Ah. Yeah, so. so we're going to do that starting quickly. Step, stage two will be to transform the three rooms in the back into Faith Kids area. We've got the Faith Kids 3 to 5 year old, and then the nursery 0 to 2, and then the Faith Kids 6 to 11 year old. Uh, some doors have to be fixed here, and um, push bars have to be installed, fresh coat of paint, some furniture, different things like that. Uh, just because it's stage 1 or stage 2 does not mean we can't do them simultaneously. So we can be working while we're doing bathrooms. If we've got some good painters, if you are a good painter, in fact, if you're OCD about painting, you need to be involved in the painting. Okay, if you're a sloppy painter, don't even show up unless you're gonna help clean something. I can't tell you how many times I've repainted stuff in churches because somebody volunteered to paint. I still remember one guy showed up. Oh yeah, I can paint. It's like, okay. And uh, I came in a couple of days after he was through painting. And he had gotten paint on the ceiling and decided, oh, well, I'll just paint the whole ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, so the color on the wall was now the color everywhere. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so if you love masking tape and meticulous and cleaning up and stuff like that, then we need you to help with the painting and all of that good stuff, okay? Stage three, we're going to try and open up. Under here, there's, a, there's the balcony overhang that's right here. So we're wanting to move these all these walls and put a single wall with three double doors going into the main sanctuary. And on this side, we're going to establish an area. All of this is we're trying to make this all of this as open as we possibly can. And this will be your hangout spot. I notice that we have a lot of people that come in on Sunday morning early for the coffee and donuts. And we want you to keep coming and we see you talking and having fun and enjoying talking with each other. We want that to continue yes. over there. So we're going to create this zone just for that so that you can come in, have your muffins and, you know, all that good stuff and hang out before or after church. Then on the other area, we're just going to create a really nice hangout area. We're calling it a welcome center. We're, we're, we're working on some things for that. But we're, it's just going to be a nice, very open, um, some new flooring will have to go in and different things. But it's, I think it's going to be a, a very beautiful area. When you walk in, I think you're going to go, wow, this is Wow, this is nice. It's going to look amazing. Stage four will be to, uh, I just said that, open up a new welcome center on that other side, where it's our area for first-time guests, where after service they'll be asked to hang out for a few minutes and get to meet the staff and some of the leadership, and that's where we will give them a gift for attending that morning and 
kind of get some information from them. So we'll be changing up a little bit of how we do stuff on that. Stage five uh, is a complete stage makeover. Uh, so the, the stage up here uh, is gonna have a whole new look and that's gonna be a major uh, thing. But I think I've, I've been looking and there's ways to do it very, very inexpen inexpensively and give it a completely new look. So again, you know, we're trying to kind of update it right now. The uh, How many have been in the old building? Yes. Okay, so there's quite a few that had, probably had never been over there. It is a beautiful facility, but it is very much dated. It's definitely, you know, 1960s, 1970s. So we need to, we need to kick it up a notch and bring it into the new, new millennium, the new century, with different paint colors and lighting and just different things that we're gonna try and do over there. Uh, of course, new flooring in the sanctuary. Uh, get rid of that old uh, maroon carpet, <laughs> which we replaced almost 20 years ago. I got an applause for replacing the red carpet, okay? <laughs> replacing the red carpet with something, you know, uh, different. Uh, stay, no shack, no orange shack. Uh, I know you have that all over your house, but no, we don't have that at the church. <laughs> Just like at home. <laughs> We've got some ideas, which I, I, I don't want to share just yet, on the uh, new design for the balcony area. Uh, so we're, we're going to be looking at some things to do up there that I think are going to be really cool. And then, of course, um, miscellaneous. Uh, what all this means is we're going to have to update some instruments. Uh, Sam was telling me this morning a couple of the keys have gone out on this, and he's been asking me for uh, <coughs> at least a year, probably. Pastor, we need a new keyboard. Pastor, we need a new keyboard. I said, how much is a new keyboard? About $3,000. I said, keep playing that one. <laughs> keep playing it. Fake it, man. Fake it till you make it. Whatever it is. Even if you're just down to the C chord. <laughs> keep playing it over and over. That's what I do. But, um, but we need about 2500 to 3000 just for a new keyboard. We're probably looking at a new soundboard, which is another couple thousand. So a little bit of lighting here and there. So uh, those are some of the things that we're going to be looking at. Of course, miscellaneous furniture, such as the coffee bar, which we got our eye on, on one that I think is going to work really nice. Some tables, some chairs. So what we're trying not to do was not, we don't want to cannibalize this building to do something over there. Notice we're not going to take all the bistros from here and put them over there. Everything in this building is going to stay in this building except for the people, okay? <laughs> so we need coffee bar tables, chairs, decor, uh, painting, etc. And so the ideal goal, the ideal goal is, drum roll please, to complete all projects by January the 1st. I'm kind of late on the drum roll. Uh, complete all projects by January 1st. 2020. Now, immediately move back. I already said that. I already talked about loving God, loving people, loving others. Okay, let's go back to stage one, which is almost the last slide. Next to the last slide, I think. So stage one, I, let's go back to that. Convert both bathrooms into family restrooms that are ADA compliant. Completion goal is September the 15th. So, so here's the deal. We, we want to be back in that building by September the 15th, which is like three weeks, two and a half weeks. Dan, it's doable, right? All right, it's doable. So when that's, so here's, here's I'm going to step out of faith. September 15th, we're going to meet Sunday morning over there. Now the other stuff is not, it's not going to be done by September 15th, just the bathrooms, but then we'll be doing some of this other stuff as we raise funds and as we move along. So September 15th is our, our Sunday morning. We'll not be back in the service. We'll be back, I mean, in this building, we'll be back over there. Now the donuts and coffee may still be here, but I think we're gonna be able to set something up over there for you temporarily so that you can just go in there Sunday morning, have your coffee, your donuts, fellowship, and then come into the service. The seating in this sanctuary is 125. Our seating in the new sanctuary, and that's what I'm going to call it, the new sanctuary, is about 250. So it will double our capacity, which means I'm going to need your help filling that up. Because I only know like two or three friends that don't go to church. All of my friends are pastors and ministers and church folk. 
So I need your help in filling that up. I know Danny was out there and Mel were out there yesterday passing out invitations awesome. in our community and they are gonna do it next Saturday, I guess, Eight as well. What time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock next Saturday. They're gonna get together. And so if you wanna help Danny and Mel go out and pass out some flyers, meet here at eight o'clock next Saturday morning. And, and they're like door hangers that are invitation with, the, with the, all the information for our services. And so we're getting the word out. So September 15th, Sunday morning, I'm gonna see you over there. And we're gonna have us a time. We're gonna just just have a great time and then as money becomes available, then we'll be doing some of the other uh, uh, projects. We, to to kickstart this uh, project, uh, we need about $5,000. Is that up there? Can you go back to the next to the last uh, slide? <clears throat> So for the bathrooms, we want to finish that up quickly. We could use about five grand just to kickstart off on these projects. So we're gonna we're gonna by faith start demo tomorrow and start moving in that direction. I believe God's gonna supply all that. Okay, what do you think? Yes. yes. You want to cover the five grand? Anybody else want to cover the five grand? Thank you, Cody. God bless you for that. See, I knew the Lord would provide it. You know, you would do it that quickly. We're still going to take an offering, okay? Because we're going to need a little bit more than five, but five will get us started. And it's going to look, I think it's, I think you're going to be very happy. What we're trying, here's here's the goal. The goal is to, to keep the atmosphere that we have in this building and the feeling that you get when you walk into this building. I can't tell you how many times people that don't attend this church have walked into this place and said, I love the feeling in this building. There's something about coming in here. Hallelujah. That we just, we love this, this something, the way you laid it out and the way it looks and the colors and everything. There's something about this area. And we love that. You know, we want to continue that. We, want, we don't want people walking into that building and go, oh my gosh, Ooh. back in the day. <laughs> right? it's, you know, we, 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 need to, we need to look good, we look, look nice, because really it comes down to one thing, people. We're all about people. Amen. Okay? We want to love people. Love people. It's all about people. That's why we're trying to do it. Just for that one reason. Because we want people to, to not, we don't want our building to be a stumbling block for people coming to the Lord. We want it to be a welcoming environment. And you guys, this morning, I mean, every morning, you guys make it a welcoming environment. You make it to where people want to come back and hang out with us, right? They're like, oh, wow, they're, they're messed up and crazy. It looks like they're having a lot of fun. I want to go back to that church because that's pretty cool. And so we want to maintain that that atmosphere that we have developed. So I'm going to have our ushers come forward. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to pray about, thank you so much, Cody, because that's really going to get us moving quickly. And that's what we want to do. But from, from this day until we are finished, we're going to call it building fund. And so there's an envelope right there in front of you. I want everybody to get an envelope. Just look at it, would you? Like your time envelope. Just there's some right there in the front. Now where it says other, I just want you to write in there building fund. Okay? And then I want you to ask the Lord, how much do I think between now and December the 31st or January the 1st, 2020, how much do I think that I can help in this area? Above and beyond my regular tithe and offering, above and beyond my tithe and offering, how much do I think... Now, you may have to go home and, and, and wrestle with your spouse over how much you think you can do. But I want you to pray about that. I want you to think about that. And this morning, if you can give an offering, great. If you can't, but you can make a pledge on that. Now, there are no pledge police at Faith Assembly. No, nobody's ever going to call you and say, hey, man, you wrote down you're going to help with 10000 and you've only given $10. <laughs> nobody's ever going to call you. That's between you and God. <laughs> But I can tell you, we've been really good over the years that when people make faith, faith pledges, you know, 99% of the time they come through. 
So we don't worry about nobody's going to call you. Our new treasurer is not going to call you and say, hey, you, you filled out the song. Nobody's going to do that. That's just for you to make a commitment to the Lord and to your church family. I believe the Lord is going to allow us to continue to grow and expand. But I feel like this is, this is the natural next step that we need to do. Let's say a word of prayer. And then after service, we're, we're going to take a moment for worship at the end of service. And I want to pray for the sick because I don't want us to dismiss without doing that. But if you have questions on some of this, please come and talk to me about that. Or if you have a really big check you want to give me, you just come and talk to me about that too. Either way. Father, we're so thankful for your love and mercy. We're so thankful for the, the vision and the plans that you've given our leadership at Faith Assembly for the future of this wonderful congregation. Father, we want to transform uh, these old buildings that we are owners of, that we are stewards of, that you have given us, and we want to be good stewards. We want to transform those buildings into a great space for people to come, give their lives to the Lord, connect to the body of Christ, and turn around and serve their communities. Father, we ask that you speak to our hearts as we make a commitment now financially, Lord, to support this, and it just above and beyond our tithe and offering, that we would do our absolute utmost that we can see this come to completion, Father, even beyond what we ask. Your word says that you would give us beyond what we could ever ask or think. And Father, I've already asked you for a lot, and you've always come through, and I'm so thankful for that. Father, I pray that you multiply and begin blessing your people with unexpected income. Begin blessing them with secure jobs, with raises and promotions without them even having to ask for them. Father, just begin to bless them with good health and, and joy. Fill their mouths with joy and with laughter. Bless their families. Bless them on their jobs. Father, I just pray your favor all over this congregation, Lord, as you have been blessing us in growth. Lord, I believe that that's going to continue as we move forward. Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious name. And here comes a rain of a promise, a rain of praise. Thank you, Lord. A thunder would have been nice, Lord, but that's okay. Let it rain. Amen, amen. We had a thunder of hope.